Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with the Simon Says Stamp Card Kit for March. And as always, we are going to create our five cards, one kit from this, um, or yes, five cards from one kit from this kit. Yeah, <laughs> okay. This is the stamp set. Usually for this kit, I do not show the contents. There are many videos that do go over what is in there. The two things that are that I'll focus on is, of course, the stamp set and the Studio 71 watercolor pencils. Now, heads up, I did actually keep all of the coloring in here because I did it different ways using these colored pencils, all with a blender pen, but it, it can it's going to make this long and I'm going to be Gabby through it. So if it's not your style, move on to another video. Yay! Okay, so for the first one, I really fell in love with this stamp set. Now, not only because of the name, Stronger Together, I loved the images. I loved the font. I am a huge fan. Don't get me wrong. I love the Flourish font or the Cursive font, but I my favorite font is a type font, a uh, typewriter whether it's an old typewriter, new typewriter, or, or anything like that. It is my favorite. I also loved the images. Very sketchy, very simple outlines. You could add the details to these images, and I absolutely loved that. So this one kind of, I got all kinds of ideas. Now, I did stick with the color palette from the pattern paper that was in the kit as well. So you can see I did a very basic swatch of my water of the watercolored pencils. Now again, here we go. I'm going to zoom this in and this is going to speed. So you're going to see I'm using one color of a watercolor pencil in this photo, okay, in this image. So you can see I've come in with a green I'm doing the outline of the stems. I'm doing the bod, the base of the flower. I'm only doing a certain section of the two leaves. What I like to use with watercolor pencils is a blender pen. Now it could be Stampin' Ups, it can be Tombows, it can be the Dove. Um, what I like about the Dove blender is it's refillable and you can replace the nibs. So it's something that's kind of permanent. Now, don't get me wrong, you can get two Stampin' Up, two or three Stampin' Up blenders all at once. They're double-ended, both brush tips, um, which is a good value as well. So the one I will be using, as you can see, is the Dove. So you can see I put colors at the base and outlined. I'm pulling it up with my blender pen. I'm actually cleaning it off to the side so that I can keep that highlight to the top of the petals. And that's just by cleaning and a little bit and then bringing it down, which will give me that shading. One color of the pencil will give you that shading. Now you're going to see that more because again, I kept all the three different ways I colored with these pencils in this video. The other item that's being sh that I'm showing in this video is my new love of embossing powders, and they are the Distress Glaze embossing powders. Oh my God, I'm I'm absolutely in love with these. Now this is Walnut Stain. Now, okay, so as always, boo boo, yes, boo boo alert going on here. So yeah, I didn't make sure that my image was dry when I poured over the embossing powder. All right, so there's a lot of brushing going on here, but I did keep some of it on because um, I did like the effect of it with the splatter. I am in love with these glazes. The beauty of these glazes is they're, they're see-through, they're transparent, um, it's a nice soft hue of the color. Um, th there's just not enough I can say about them. I use them all throughout this um, because I thought the colors were perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now the colors that I'm going to use for this video are peeled paint, antique linen, weathered wood, hickory smoke, 
and uh, walnut stain. And as I said, this is walnut stain, the dark. I know, not vintage photo, but I have it. Don't I know what you're all thinking out there? Um, I just wanted to go with the walnut stain for it being dark. I'm going to prop this up using my scrapbook.com double sided foam tape along with two pieces of the uh, pattern paper cut. And then I'm going to set this onto my standard A2 size card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And it is a top folding card. Yes, that beep is my phone in the background. So for the next one, now what I'm, the ink that I'm using to stamp with is Simon Says Fog. Because, and I'm stamping it three times. I want to have a good impression but I don't want to have a, a deep uh, impression, if that makes any sense at all. So while I'm looking for a, a no line, and I'm pulling in the cards now, you can hear the bag rustling there, it will end up being a no line look, but you will be able to see the line very faintly. Yeah, I don't, I, I know I'm explaining this wrong. Um, so I am going to stamp this twice or three times. Now for this one, I'm going to use two of the colored pencils, of the watercolor pencils. So you can see, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the same green. I'm going to outline my images. I'm going to put my green in certain areas. Um, I, I don't want to cover the entire image because that helps me get a shade, a, a a darker value to a lighter value. Once I get the first layer of color, I'm going to bring in a second. You can see for the flowers, I stayed very close to the bottom of the, the petals to the flower with the dark blue. I'm going to go over those with a gray. So I'm actually going to mix a gray and the dark blue together. I'm actually mixing my green with that same dark blue that's in the flower in the leaves. So I'm actually putting some dark blue at the base of those leaves. So again, for this one, this is how I mix those colors, still using my blender pen. Now you can see when I do this, after I've gone through the darker color and got that mixed, I'm cleaning off my pen. It's almost like you take a paintbrush when you're doing watercolors. You take a paintbrush, you lift up your color, you put it down, you go back in for your clean water, you come back so that you can move it to get that lighter color. That's what I'm doing with the blender pen, except I'm not putting it in water. I'm scribbling it off onto a scratch piece of paper. You can see that gray and that blue just really mix beautifully. You can see the blue that sits in the shadows and then that gray just lightens it up just a little bit. I this time will take my heat gun to make sure that it is dry. And then what I'm going to use for the sentiment on this one is the embot the distress glaze of peeled paint. Um, Again, I have fallen in love with these. These are just wonderful. I love the fact that they are see-through. I just love this stamp set. I mean, that's the beauty when I put the first sentiment, we are always stronger together. You can see the floral image, the stems and the leaves coming through the sentiment, which I think is really cool. Again, even though I um did put my heat gun to it yeah i still forgot for it. and there's still some wet areas not a big deal i come in with a dry brush i clean up um i remove it but again i do like the fact that it is sitting on there and when i heat set that it sets on that so it just adds a little bit more of a shade to it i am using my ranger emboss it pen just to add some more dots so again a nice quick way to create embellishments onto the card without pulling out paint, without pulling out some enamel dots or your Nouveau drops or sequins. You can just use uh, these two items. 
This kind of will have the same setup as my first card, um, only because I just fell in love with the paper. I fell in love with the images, so I wanted to make sure everything was put in here as much as possible. I'm using my liquid adhesive to adhere this down onto my standard A2 size card base, which again will be a top folding standard A2 size. So for my third card, now this would be the third way that I work with watercolor pencils. Again, using a blender, I have used, and I do use a brush with water or a water brush. I do like using my blender brush the most. I think it's the most versatile. I think it mixes the colors the best. I also think I can add a little bit of pressure to really get that pigment moving and I'm not pilling the paper. That's why I tend to go to a blender pen. So for this image, this is one of the watercolor cards by Susie and everything in the background is going to be done in gray. It's going to have a gray tint to it um, along the background. That huge, beautiful poppy. Um, and if it's not a poppy, it looks like a poppy to me. Um, that huge, beautiful flower that's sitting right in the front there. That is the only image that will have color to it. So I've got all of my gray set. And now I'm going to come in with, again, two colors on the flower. So I'm coming in with the darkest red. I'm going over the lines that are already in the image. They're already set there. They're kind of, they kind of set the tone that this is where the shadow should be. Once I have all of that down, and again, I'm not being particular like I would with colored pencils. You can, you certainly can but you don't have to be exact. You don't have to have an even line. You can have scratchy lines. You can have some areas darker, some areas lighter, because this will all blend out once you put the blender pen onto this. I, this time, I'm now coming in with an orange and I'm going over the same areas. Um, so you can see just how this blender pen explodes all of these pigments. When it comes to watercolor pencils, does not take much. Now I will be showing a comparison of watercolor pencils uh, soon. Um, hopefully um, within the next couple of weeks or by the end of the month. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, just to show, you know, same thing what I did with the colored pencils. Um, and all of the other comparison videos that I had done. Again, just showing you the differences and how they each work. But you can see that blender pen just pulls it. It just always, <clears throat> it truly comes to life. I do tend to get better results also using a blender pen. Um, I do find that I, I, I get the best results. Um, you can layer on top of this. Now that I don't show in this video. Once I'm done with this image, I let the image go, um, but you can layer, but you do have to truly wait until the image is dry before you put a next layer. Now, sometimes what I like to do, like with this image, I would add some markers and just add a, a, a watercolor wash over this um, to still hold on to the watercolor pencils, but just to give it some more definition. Um, or you can add colored pencils on top of these, again, to give it more definition. I'll come in with that second medium. As I said, you can come in on a second layer of your colored pencils, but it'll start pilling. It'll start moving uh, the paper. So a lot of times I will come in with colored pencils and just brighten it up, pull out those definitions. So I'm going to grab one of my dies by Simon Says, and I'm going to, it's a, my stitch rectangle, and I'm going to use that to cut out my image 
and then I'm going to back this onto a piece of uh, one of the cardstocks. Now all of the cardstock backgrounds, of course, have been cut four and a quarter by five and a half, um, so that they cover the front of my um, standard A2 size card bases. I'm using one of the uh, solid sentiments that says, hello, friend. And I'm using the Simon Says Intense Black. I like this ink. I think it is a very good ink. But what I do really like about this, if you're looking for a pitch black, this is not one that I choose. I think this is an extremely, once it dries, it's an extremely dark gray. And that's what I like about it. It looks very dark on this screen, on the video. But after it dries, I'm looking at it now, it's perfect because it does dry back. It's not that harsh black color. So again, those are the three ways that I used the watercolor pencils. I hope there were some tricks, but no, you will be seeing more on them soon. So for this card, the fourth card, I grabbed that long stamp with the lines. I fell in love with the lines. And of course, I'm still playing with these embossing glazes. So I'm just using the bottom half of the stamp and I'm stamping this onto a piece of cardstock. Now all of the cardstock that I'm stamping on um, and, and coloring on is either a water, is the watercolor paper by Susie for the, for the image and everything else is actually Bristol paper that I'm using. So I'm stamping these images on there. So the first color I use was for this card was fossilized amber. And the second color that I'm coming in with is weathered wood. I'm actually layering them on top of each other. Here is the cool part of that. They change colors. So this weathered wood's got a tint of blue to it. As I'm heating it, it's mixing with the fossilized amber. It's giving me a green tint. I, yes, can you tell I'm falling in love with these? There is so many more experiments I'm going to have with these. Um, I grabbed some of my twine. I'm going to wrap it around multiple times on this uh, piece of cardstock because you can see the background that I have. And then I'm going to place that so the lines are going to go vertically that I just embossed while these lines on my background are going horizontally. I got a very calming, um, I know it's strange to say, but when it comes to the stamp set and the color palettes at which this came across, I found it very calming. I know, very, very strange. Um, but very calm. So very nice. So I have that. I'm using my double-sided foam tape just to prop that off. One of the sentiments in this set just cracked me up. Um, again, the stamp set is called Stronger Together. So you have, hello again, I've missed you, or miss you, and love you, and dreaming of when we will be together again. But there's this one sentiment, and it simply says, call me, or text me, whatever. <laughs> I love that sentiment. <laughs> okay, so for you guys that have seen my previous videos, I am all about the snarky. I am all about the sarcastic. I am all about the dry humor in a sentiment. Um, do I have those sentiments that, you know, like believe and inspirational and dream absolutely um but to me that says it all you know call me or text me you know whatever um to me that says it so again i'm using the weathered wood again um for this sentiment i have the sentiment sitting down this is actually a piece of bristol cardstock because i had some scraps why waste them and I'm just going to simply set that down onto the other side, but lower than the image that we embossed. I will prop that up using some double-sided foam tape, um, but I just absolutely love <laughs> that sentiment. I found one of the best stamp sets, too, for 
<laughs> sarcastic sentiments. I'm cracking myself up. I need to stop. Um, it is awesome. Um, one of the phrases that I say at work, at my horrible full-time job, um, is not my circus, not my monkeys. I found this. Yes, that was me hitting my head on the camera. I'm just saying I needed to keep that in. So, yeah, I shifted everything. So I had to start all over. So I just, again, paper has two sides. We turn it over. We just keep going. Oy. Um, so, yeah, we are always saying that. It's not my circus, not my monkeys, um, because it's all departments that we have within our group. The color that I'm using here from the embossing glaze is um, hickory smoke. And it is a beautiful, beautiful um, gray. And again, translucent. So again, doing the same thing, call me or text me, whatever. I'm going to add some leaves across the top of this. And then I am going to do some very basic uh, watercolor pencil coloring in the center. I'm going to use the same um, embossing powder. And then I'll color in between those as well. So when I saw that stamp set, I had to have it. <laughs> I just haven't figured out how what type of cards I'm going to put together. Um, although I'm really liking this whole very calming um, look. So once I had all of that, I'm sorry, back to the card. <laughs> I kind of got off on a tangent there. Um, back to the card. So I'm just grabbing the teal green and I'm just putting that very lightly down on the bottom and you can tell I'm just being scratchy. I'm flicking it on. Now it would look beautiful just like that. I'm actually going to come in with the blender pen. And again, once I move the pigment down at the bottom, I'm going to clean my uh, blender pen off just a little bit. The color's still going to be there so I can come from the top and down into the darker color. So I'm actually pushing the dark down where I want that shadow um, is basically what I'm trying to do. Um, or how I work the blender pen. Um, these are, are, they move beautifully. Again, I only use the blender pen, but they, they blended beautifully with it. Um, to the point where they actually, they did completely liquefy. Uh, there was no left residue unless I intentionally left it there. Um, what you want, need to remember when it comes to watercolor pencils is don't overwork it. If you overwork it, then you're going to start pilling your paper. Um, and use a very light hand when you're putting the colors down. Um, and then you'll have better results. So I have no idea how I tied that bow. I just literally, I thought I was tying a bow. I lost another end. Uh, <laughs> so we just went with it because it stayed together. <coughs> I just snipped down the base of it and that's going to be our last card. So I do hope you enjoyed the cards. I do hope um, if you're in the States, matter of fact, it doesn't matter if you're in the States or not. We all have um, our concern, uh, health concerns uh, that's going through. So I hope everybody is staying at their crafty space, um, being creative, um, keeping themselves and their family safe through this. I know we are, um, but I know we will get through this um, and everything will be fine. So all the products that I used will be listed down in the video description. And if you have any questions or comments, please make sure you leave those down below as well. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe, be part of my group. If you've already subscribed, as always, I say thank you. And I am truly grateful for those that have been here and those that have seen me for the first time. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you are enjoying your day. Um, I know there's chaos going around, but please remember, stay calm. This will absolutely work itself through. Everything is okay. Um, again, keep your family close. Um, keep an eye on the situation, but by all means, remember, we have to do this every day and this helps us to do it. What's most important to me is always be creative. Take care, guys.